We did it. Well, I should say you did it. Yesterday, I put out an analysis on Robert De Niro's, or we should say Jack's tie in the 2000 hit movie, Meet the Parents. And I put the question, can Jack talk Thai? Jack can't talk Thai. Oh no, Dina, Jack can talk Thai. Jack talk Thai very well. There was one phrase in there that was, that just got me no matter how many times I listened to it, I couldn't for the life of me figure out what he was saying. When it was finally revealed in the comment section, and thank you guys, there were actually two different people that cracked it and at different times. I don't think they looked at each other's responses either. They both found out independently. When I listened to it, I thought, oh my God, I'm going to share that with you in this clip because what happened and why I couldn't understand it is going to be a fantastic lesson for anybody learning Thai or any other language from this part of the world. Have you ever been in a situation where um, you've tried to speak the language and you think, oh, come on, you've got to understand what I'm saying, but you're only received with, huh? What's he talking about? Just scratched heads. They don't get what you're saying. No matter how clearly you thought you were speaking, they still don't understand you. And you think, oh, they just don't want to understand. Well, I'm telling you, sometimes they honestly do not understand. And there's some reasons for that. Now, one of the problems, I think I was listening so focused in at a granular level at every word during my analysis, I really needed to step back. Have you ever been in a position where you've um, written something yourself? And no matter how many times you've checked it over, when somebody else reads it, it's full of errors, typos, spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes. You've used the apostrophe in your when it shouldn't have. All of these things as a native speaker, you should have known, but other people picked up on. When we listen to what Robert De Niro says here, I think it's a very similar thing. I was so invested in listening to just the phonology of what he was saying and what he was doing, I really needed to step back, listen through fresh ears and listen again. And the lessons that we get from that um, are really, really valuable for any learner of not just Thai, but any language across this part of the world, at least Chinese, Vietnamese, all of these languages, this lesson is gonna be relevant. Let's take a look at what was actually said first. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to repeat that part. Um, I have it here on my spectrograph. Um, let's just look at it here. Um, I'll pull this graph up so we can see the voice. So when I first heard that, I was hearing Samra Praksa Praksa and this Praksa and I wrote it in there that it's Priksa, something I don't know. You can see on what I put up in the clip yesterday. And you've got to understand, in Thai, we have a thing where if something ends in a p, p, k, p T, or K, it's caught in the throat. So, samrap, ta, ta. Nothing comes out. So, if I said, um, ta, kao, I'll have this space between it. I'm not saying ta, kao, ta, kao, it's ta, stop. And so, samrap, look, I will stop right on the samrap when the lips hit. Now, what happens when Westerners learn Thai, Vietnamese, they, if I say, what did you want? What did you want? What did you want? My throat keeps the pressure going and these sounds, or it's a liaison in French, they all run in together. And that's where we get um, tone santi, normal santi, when it's the effect of sounds influencing the next sound. But in Thai, at the end of words like this, samrap, luksao, the glottis stops, the air pressure stops, and it goes on. But what's happening here is his air is still pushing out. Let's listen. You can see samrap, luksao, samrap, and you're getting this, the, the lips are following on. So I was hearing that as the beginning of the next word rather than actually the end, because we would never say samrap, samrap, you never, it's samrap, it hits there. And so... 
my ears were then tuning in. What's this next word? Is it the name of the hotel? Now, this is another really important bit. I remember seeing Meet the Parents back in 2000. I haven't seen it for so long, but I just had in the back of my mind, there was something about the cons- the Samui uh, conspiracy. Now- I'm a very accepting person, Fokker. All I ask for is honesty. Oh, honesty? You want to talk about truth and honesty, Jack? Okay, let's talk a little truth and honesty. Let's talk a little Operation Kusumi. Jack. Was he talking about that? It was about Ko Samui. Ko meaning island, not Ko Samui, by the way. It's Ko Samui. Um, and it's this island down the south of Thailand. It's absolutely beautiful. People go and they would be going on a honeymoon. Now, what threw me is here, he said Chiang Rai. <laughs> which is in the far north of Thailand, uh, on the border with Myanmar. And so when he said Chiang Rai and I was expecting Got Samui, I was thrown. I'm thinking, okay, is he going to be saying the name of a hotel property or something? When he said this specimen, let's hear the whole, spe- the whole phrase sentence, the interaction. And so my ears then are trying to figure out something based on the context that I was expecting and it didn't match. Because it didn't match, it's like, I can't for the life of me figure out what he's saying. Okay, so the first bit, for how many people? So I'm expecting an amount of people or something that's going to indicate how many people. So that was throwing me. But the thing, the reason it threw me, listen to the end. That's correct. That's correct. That's right. And so I'm thinking, well, whatever he said here, he was making a statement. Is this such and such? And he's saying because that would be the kind of question that would receive the but actually listen to what he's saying. Let's get it. สำหรับลูกสาวและสามีเธอสำหรับ for ลูกสาว my daughter or daughter you don't have to say my la and sami husband te now this is really interesting have a listen to the way that he says te now that would mean her husband which would indicate two people สำหรับลูกสาวและสามีเธอ but listen to what's happened here I'm guessing, and now this is just a guess, Robert De Niro's normal accent in English, his T's and D's are very dental. What are you doing? Doing. Two, 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 two. What are you doing? What are you doing? Doing. This T is coming very forward. So he's probably written down um, T-E-R maybe, ter in English, because I expect that he didn't learn how to read Thai just for this little conversation. And then when he's reading it, he's saying to 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 which should be to but then it goes to to but then he reads it back as to which is the totally different word. So what he's saying here is but it comes out as and not only that, he has the first, so samla pruksa la samito. Samla pruksa la samito. Let's listen again. Samla pruksa la samito. Samla pruksa la samito. Samla pruksa la samito. Why didn't I hear that first? I think because of one, all of the noise of what I was expecting to hear, the next phrase threw me, and just the general prosody of what he was saying. Um, wasn't what I was used to or what I was expecting to hear. This is an important lesson. You might think you're saying it clear enough in the language, but especially in languages like Thai, where there's very low tolerance for different kinds of accents when you're speaking um, in Thailand, no matter what province, if you're speaking the um, provincial dialect, you'll be speaking that. Otherwise, you speak standard Thai. And so when you hear something that's off that, it just throws you. And I couldn't for the life of me figure it out. But thank you to the people in the comments section that did figure it out. The lessons to take away here is one, what you expect to hear is going to influence what you hear. Two, 
when you're so focused on trying to focus on one little individual thing, you might be missing the full message. And sometimes you just have to step back, listen with fresh ears, you know, look at things a little bit blurry so you can start to see the full picture. Three, in this kind of context, the next statement, Chai Krap, it actually totally threw what I thought I might have heard. And so then everything was trying to fit into that. So context, prosody is everything. And also like the environment and the background of the speaker that you're speaking to. What are they expecting? This is a very important lesson. Um, thank you to the guys that figured that out for me. Robert De Niro, for what he did in that clip, it's pretty impressive. Um, take a listen to the analysis that I did yesterday. There are a lot of fantastic lessons in there. If you really like this kind of stuff, language analysis, um, using the mind tech, come into the Minecraft Discord server. And if you really, really like it, well, this is what Minecraft is all about. Subscribe to the program because you'll learn rather than having to rely on other people to coach you, you can train your own ears and understand so you can be your best coach, your best teacher and learn some amazing things. I'm Stuart J. Raj. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Thank you to everyone who's subscribed and I'll see you on the other side. Yeah.